just me proving that something launches in this video. Yep, you read it right. I have learned absolutely nothing from the last attempt and attended yet another Falcon Heavy launch. This series has just turned into just solid evidence that my ADHD has no bounds and will one day consume me whole. In December of 2023, I attempted to watch a rocket take off and then land propulsively back at Cape Canaveral. But thanks to bad luck, weird weather, and some ground service issues, that launch, OTV-7, didn't happen until the final weeks of December, over two weeks after when it was supposed to. Now if you want to hear more about that story, which I highly recommend you do before this video kicks off, go check out this video over here. But to summarize, I still had not seen a Falcon Heavy launch, and I wanted to change that oh so badly. Now obviously I did witness a launch while I was at the Space Coast for this trip. The real question is did I witness the launch that I went down there for in the first place? Only one way to find out. This all started just like how it did last time. I was looking through my phone and noticed a hard launch date for Europa Clipper, a satellite intended for one of Jupiter's moons. Huh. Upon seeing this, I immediately began my research, seeing if it was possible for me to head down to see it launch in person. Only to find out that the side boosters are being expended for more Delta V. Oh, not going to that one. I was a little bummed out that there was yet another Falcon Heavy launch that I would not be attending. So I kept scrolling and noticed another Falcon Heavy launch. The good news is that the side boosters were coming back to the Cape. The bad news is that the launch is only two weeks away. Not a problem, right? Yeah, well, a little friend decided to show up one week before the launch. Weather. And dear God, it looks so bad! Fortunately, I came a little prepared. This time, I would be in Florida for essentially an entire week in case the launch got delayed a day or two. Or five. However, June is the start of the rainy season for Florida, meaning you're getting thunderstorms every single day. It did not look good. In fact, I was seeing people who always go to these big time launches saying they weren't going to this one. Everyone and everything was telling me, do not go to this launch. And you know what? I still went. I am about to make the Biggest fucking mistake of my life. Stop it! Bad! Go on the plane! Fucking Eagles fans and chickies and peas, the hell is with that?
dirty shit because of the humidity. God dang it. We are finally back in Florida for attempt number two at watching a Falcon Heavy launch. I am a little concerned about the weather while I'm down here. However, I have no choice considering the fact that the next recoverable Falcon Heavy is next year. Now I know what you're thinking. Did you really plan to stay in Florida for an entire week just for a rocket launch? To answer your question, yes. The launch in question would take up the entire day, so launch days are not an issue. But what if the launch does happen on the initial date? It would be a problem in Virginia, but I was in Florida, and Florida, or specifically Central Florida, has this very cool place called Orlando. I have no idea why I do this shit. Your guess is as good as mine. In addition, I'll be going to Busch Gardens Tampa to attain my 100th credit. Hey, past dang time! How did that go? It rained. It didn't happen. Good for you, man. Good for you. Anyways, looks like I'm nearly at this summer house. <laughs> No, we're not making the same joke again. <laughs> yes, we are. Yoink. After traveling nonstop for 10 hours, I finally made it to where I was staying for the week. By the way, did you know I only got two hours of sleep before I left? Well, you know what that means. Yoink. After a couple more hours of sleep, I went to Dizzy Springs for dinner. But before that, I just want to answer another question some people might have. That, of course, being what is even so special about a rocket landing itself, let alone two at the same time? Ever since rocketry kicked off, the rockets themselves were not reusable. After they boosted the payload to a certain height, the engine and the tanks were just discarded. Now, why would you do this? Simple. The rocket equation. Why carry a bunch of dead weight that hinders the performance of the rocket when you could just get rid of it? Discarding the booster alone makes a rocket go from lofting essentially a backpack into a barely stable orbit to being able to send a car all the way to Mars. Just one problem though. What do you do with the discarded booster? Before the space shuttle, countries would just let them crash back onto the surface like China does now, or crash them into the ocean. This would make the boosters only one use though, which costs a lot of money. Imagine if after every flight, the airline throws every single plane they use away into the garbage. It is simply not economically feasible in the long run, and it makes living on other planets nearly impossible. So why let the booster crash in the first place when you can recover it? Recovering an orbital class booster is not easy in any way. Oh, you thought you can recover the booster with parachutes? Nope, too heavy! The only feasible way to recover a heavy lift orbital class booster is by using the engines to decelerate until you land on a solid surface. However, that was considered impossible until 2015 and is still considered by some <coughs> as a waste of money. Okay, TED talk over. While I ate my dinner, I began to worry a little bit. What if, after all this preparation, after all the precautions I took, and it still does not- Can we not? Oh, am I worrying the mood? I'm trying to eat my ganache. Please. I can't with you. You know what? He's right. I should be having fun right now. I am in the happiest place on earth. I should be taking advantage of the situation I am in right now and have the time of my life. Only one thing to do then. Montage! Because there's no line. There is no line for Lego. Congressional poll. 
I want to use Legos now. They call me a miner. Wait, not, not like that, not like that. The Kraggle went hard on this mofo. Magnificent. It's Tracy Tree. Dreams at Every single Once time again, I try and forget it, I Disney keep getting Dreams reminded of the times that I got this wrong. The day of the launch. I was psyched and my hopes were high. As usual, I ate a healthy breakfast consisting of string cheese, a chocolate chip cookie, and a celery stick. Oh my fucking god, he's now just messing with me! So far it looks okay, but a lot can change. They do have a two hour window in case something does happen, so cross fingers really. And after a drink from the half gallon of green tea, it was time to hit the road. We return once again to the Kennedy Space Center. However, this time we have the entire day to spend there. I changed my shirt to the full flow shirt, which is what I'm wearing right now. And I'm going to be going around enjoying everything until I have to get back in with all of my camera equipment that weighs roughly around 60, 70 pounds altogether. And then head to Banana Creek. If you're not a space nerd or a kid, this place is neat with some cool attractions. However, for a space nerd like me, this is just like the amusement parks I go to all the time. You got space exhibits, a rocket garden, comedy, <laughs> Boeing. A fun little <laughs> challenge that anyone that actually has a life and doesn't have 3,000 hours in Purple Space Program already. I, I am a nerd. <laughs> One of the side boosters from the first Falcon Heavy launch Freaking Space Shuttle Atlantis? This place is a space nerd's dream destination. Well, at least we got to enjoy that because while that was going on, Florida did what it does best and created a nice big cell in between the Cape and Orlando. Just please, don't do this to me. Look at this kid. He looks so happy and struggling so damn much with all the weight he's carrying. Do you really want to rain on his parade a second time? Come on, man. While hang time is heading to Banana Creek, let's do a fun tradition and talk about the payload for today's mission. Last time, the payload was a classified space plane going into a Molniot orbit. Now, if you don't know what a Molniot orbit is, let me go ahead and explain it for you. A orbit is a no, 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 we do not have time for that. I'm not going to let you guys listen to a massive nerd go on about orbital mechanics. We're moving on. The payload for this launch is the GOES-U satellite, or the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites Constellation. This bad boy is operated by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, which is the government organization that oversees things like the National Weather Service. The job is simple. 
to monitor, image, and capture data on storms and changes involving the ocean. So you're telling me they launched satellites into space just to look at clouds? Yes. Well, it does more than that. Let me explain. You can learn a lot about storms based on how high it goes and what the roof of the storm is doing. These satellites also monitor for incoming meteors, solar storms, lightning, and hurricanes. That last one, by the way, is very important, as GOES-U is intended to monitor the east coast of the US. Funny enough, this launch is happening in June, which is the start of the hurricane season. Yeah, they need this up as quickly as possible. This launch is actually big for me, as the data for this satellite will help me in the future, as Ecotop data is very useful for trained storm spotters, which I am one of. Here is a cell over I-4 in Florida, and here is me driving directly into it. I can't see shit! Can't have shit in Florida! Now I understand why Florida men exist, because they have to deal with shit like this. I'm having fun right now! That being said, Let's find out if Hangtime witnesses a Falcon Heavy launch, or once again, goes back home empty-handed. We arrived at the Saturn V launch center once again, and just like last time, I had time to kill, which means we're checking out the Saturn V launch center once more! Home. After a look around of something I have definitely looked at many times before, it is now time to return to a familiar place to begin the countdown. Alright, we are at the press site. Good news is... It's clear. Bad news is all the fun stuff is heading in this direction now. Before it was going down, now it's going east because of wind movement. Good news, however, is Shoyer is breaking all the shit up. If it was launching now, it would most likely happen. I don't see any cumulonimbus clouds in the area, so... Hopefully it stays like this. Now I know I'm using the umbrella for protection from the sun. If you have a problem with that, Fuck you! Prop load started. They moved it 10 minutes for some reason, probably because SpaceX felt like it. But we are go for prop load. They are currently just cooling down the ground, the ground pipes. So, cross fingers right now. The percentage of weather violation improves from 30 to 50. 12 seconds later. 70 now. See that cloud all the way over there? I don't like that cloud. I want it to go away. <laughs> have gone further than last time. Last time being where it, it scrubbed 42 minutes before launch because of problems with the ground surface equipment. So, we've gotten further than last time. 30 minute mark, I get to do the tradition. I get to eat a Dorito. Mm. It's warm. I wonder why. Alright, the next milestone that we are waiting for is the 20 minute vent. Once we see the 20 minute vent, that means we are in the right direction.
Do you guys see any scary looking clouds? I don't see any scary looking clouds. Nothing, nothing. Well, maybe that, that that's really low to the ground and nothing of uh, that magnitude will ever drop stuff in Florida. It's too hot. That's just some person in a garbage truck, don't worry. The one thing that I'm worried is my reaction. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I'll keep my composure for as long as possible, but I can't guarantee anything, so people are gonna get annoyed. Well, hopefully I don't swear. That's my one worry, that I start swearing profusely. Like I did with the Starship launch for in, on 420. Holy shit! Oh my fucking god, it lifted! I really hope the sound for you guys comes through. It would be insane if you can't hear what I hear. I'm hoping. One can hope, okay? Uh, it's gonna be insane if my scrub streak ends. So far, I'm four, I'm, I am one for five for launches. One for five. And I just want it to end already. There's re-entry. There's one. There's two. Ah, oh, you can see them.
That's right, it finally launched. Against the odds and after nearly a year of attempting to witness a Falcon Heavy in person, along with spending months prepping for attempt after attempt and spending a lot of money, dealing with the abhorrent weather in the tropics and having scrub after scrub after scrub on the last attempt, I got to see a Falcon Heavy take off and then have its side boosters land propulsively back at the cape. Hell, it was on the first attempt too, and it was worth it. There is no other sight quite like watching two skyscrapers fall from the sky and suddenly land. In the end, I regret nothing. As I look at a recovered booster from one of its previous missions, all I can think Hold on one second, people. Our entire bit has been just going to rocket launches, specifically Falcon Heavy and it not launching. And now that a Falcon Heavy is launched, the hell are we supposed to do now? Oh, mother fuck! Man, if I was high right now, this would be the craziest shit ever. 